what's uh, what's the date? I'm going to check this one. Thirteenth uh, of the ninth, Friday, Friday the thirteenth. Oh, I think we stop this completely. <laughs> A terrible risk is going to happen. Something awful. Some enormous bird is going to sweep me away, but I hope not. Um, actually, I wouldn't mind really. It's that time of year, though. The point being, middle of September. It's, it's, it's a wonderful time to be a bird watcher because, as they say, anything can happen. Because there's so much movement going on. There's the summer birds, for example, like the swallows and the house martins and the various warblers are all on the way out of the country. They're off down to Africa. I just love that. I mean, I live just in the middle of London and Parliament Hills just over there. I go and stand on the hill there and some days there's hundreds of swallows skimming around my feet. And then a few weeks later, if I were, if I were a cow, or something like that, or an elephant even, down in South Africa, I might well have the same swallows um, skimming around my feet. You can get more under an elephant than you can under me, much easier. And um, th so there's all that going on. At the same time, it changes so quickly because as soon as you hit October, or even the last couple of days of September, that's when you begin to get the winter visitors coming in. The, maybe the wild geese will be arriving in some places. they come down from the Arctic. And you've still got some of the residents. And I love trying to figure it out at the moment. I, I mean, nobody's cooperating right now, but I know we had at least one pair of robins nest just outside the garden and there were a couple of babies hopping around. I got some lovely pictures of them earlier in the autumn. And now, oh, there's bang on cue, but you'll never get it. Uh, there's, there, the robin, you see, doing what he's not supposed, that really makes my point. That robin, who was hanging on that, come back and show them, on that feeder. Now that feeder with sunflower seeds, <coughs> I'm sure, wouldn't say suitable for robins. It's not what you'd expect. Blue tits, grey tits, all that sort of thing. But the robins, very sensible, very intelligent, figured out, why just them? I'll try these sunflower seeds. And now he's gone away because he realises he's not behaving like a robin's supposed to do. But I don't know whether that's um, mum or dad from the summer or a couple of the youngsters uh, that, that are knocking about and have now got their nice red fronts. Turn round, camera, behind you, you have on this close feeder. Now, he's, he's not going to be able to get in here. That's why I put this one there. This is a ring neck parakeet, and there's some nice seeds in there. But it's got this mesh, which is meant to keep out the um, squirrels. But that just about, he can get his head in, whoa. He won't get it stuck, but I don't think he's gonna get enough leverage or leverage on a seed to get a seed either. It's perfect for doing that, for showing what a parakeet does, isn't it? Grab hold of things with its beak to climb and then watch these for hours, I really can. By the way, an obvious question often asked, are they forcing out our native birds? There's no evidence at the moment that they are a problem and they have been around him around London in particular for something like 30 or 40 years. So if something bad was going to happen, I think it would have happened by now. But uh, no, I think they're an acceptable addition. Except, <laughs> except that my neighbors hate them because they make a lot of noise. Actually, the neighbors make quite a lot of noise sometimes and they don't fly around and dangle off branches, and they're not green. Here they're coming. This is the even late afternoon gathering. You see blue tits come in and go in. I think it's been quite a good year for blue tits, is the impression I'm getting, because I'm seeing a lot of youngsters. It's so hard to know. People often say, you know, and you get in the papers, good year for this, bad year for this, but, you know, it can be observations from one place or one area 
can be very misleading, and you might find somewhere else in the country, um, is completely different. And I do think we've got a shift of our birds in Britain at the moment in particular. Um, there's a lot of evidence for this, that birds, particularly migrants, are beginning to nest further and further north. And that's pretty certainly global warming, weather changing. There's a greenfinch. Good reason to keep your clean, your feeders clean, because greenfinches are very apt to pick up this fungal disease, and it's pretty nasty when you get it. But um, keeping the feeders clean will always help. I'm lecturing myself now. I need to do that. They're coming and going, isn't they? This is probably because it's been raining most of the morning. This is the first chance they've had. And they look down and they see myself and our, our agile cameraman down here and think, uh, well, we wouldn't normally go down and muck around, but we're hungry. Where's the woodpecker? And Here's prejudice. You never heard him. Never thought you'd hear me say this. Never thought I'd hear myself say this. But one bird I am coming to. Um, I won't say hate. That's too strong. But kind of get annoyed with, and that's my feral pigeons, which are running around right now. <laughs> and you know what bothers me? They are clumsy. They are so flipping clumsy, and if they get in amongst the gnomes, they knock them all over. I often come down here and I find gnomes knocked over and flowers flattened and various other things. And it's the pigeons, I watch them. They, they're very belligerent and quarrelsome, but mainly clumsy. They go down to the little pond for a drink and fall in. They just fall in. They try to balance on, on a rock, I'll get a drink and fall in. Chaffinch, a very youngster. This is nice. 